once we've set up a uh, state management using um, component state, and we've also had a context state, uh, which is very similar to what we have in React. Uh, however, there's another type of state that we haven't set up that is also very popular to use in front-end frameworks, and that's a centralized store. Uh, so one that uh, almost everybody knows is a Redux, but there's a few more that people use in React applications. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at a few different options that we have in U for a centralized store. Uh, the first up is gonna be uh, Udux. So Udux is uh, purported to try to be as close, you know, pretty close to, um, to Redux, uh, as you can tell from the name. And uh, on the top of it, it's still using the, um, it's not like forcing you to use quite as many uh, uh, setup sort of quirkiness that, that Redux does. Uh, so it should be fairly simple for us to set up, but if things do go wrong, it can be a little bit tough to um, understand what that is. So we're gonna go through, set something up from scratch and uh, and I'll, I'll show you some ways to like debug that too. So how we're gonna find it, um, you just type in udux into Chris.io, and that brings you to udux here. Now, on its own, udux is gonna require a, a struct style components. So we are going to start over with our application. So I've erased everything, um, and uh, we're just gonna set up from scratch. Uh, so right now, Main is complaining because our lib has nothing in it. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and bring in uh, U. Um, let's see, U, the prelude, star. And then, oh yeah, I completely forgot. We're gonna go to our cargo toml. I've already done this, which is bring in Udux. And uh, now that's going to be available to us to also bring in the prelude here. All right, let's uh, let's create our our first struct here. So I'm going to do a pub struct app. Um, I am. So let's go ahead and not store anything in it right now. Um, as we need to, I'll be updating this. So it's going to be a very sort of like um, build and then refactor sort of uh, process here. I'm going to show you us bringing in Udux and then all the things that we need to change as we as we sort of like bring it in slowly. So let's get just the hello world going again. Um, and we're going to do a counter app that uses uh, Udux as its state. Um, okay, so impl component for app, uh, our message, we don't need one, our properties, we don't need one. Um, when we create, we're just gonna return self, and for this view, let's just do our, our hello world. We'll just uh, we'll just say that it's the app. We'll just give it the title. All right, so that should make um, our main happy, and everything should be working again. I've already got trunk uh, running behind the scenes, so let's go take a look. And there's our app. Okay, so great first steps. Now, uh, I want to bring in. I want to create the component that we're going to have state with. Uh, so that's um, uh, that's going to be a counter component. Let's create that really quickly. So counter.rs. We're gonna mod this. And this also needs to be a struct component because it's going to be mutating and uh, accessing that state.
All right, so for the same thing, we're gonna set the message to nothing right now. Um, and the properties, just gonna set this for nothing right now, but these are gonna change very shortly. All right, we're just gonna do another sort of like just show the skeleton of what this is gonna what this is gonna look like. Um, for create, we're just gonna return self, and for the view, um, it's gonna be a a couple different things here. So we're gonna have our div. Um, inside of that, I'm thinking an h1 tag just to show that we're on the counter. Um, then I'm going to want a like a p tag, uh, which is going to show. Um, uh, we're going to use a format for this. Um, and I'm using a format because it's going to make it a little bit easier to add in a variables uh, worth of stuff later. Right now we don't have one, so we'll just have a. Um, uh, it'll just have a warning saying, "Hey, this is a useless format for now." Uh, okay, so this is going to be the button has been pressed um, whatever times. So I'm going to say like zero times, let's say. Um, okay. And we're going to close the P tag. And then finally, we're going to have that button. Um, we're not going to put an on click on it yet. Uh, and then we're going to state that you are click me so now in my library I can now pull that in right here so let's go ahead and bring in the counter And if we take a look at our app, now we can see, okay, we have our app, then we have our counter, uh, and the button has been pressed zero times. The button doesn't do anything, but that's fine. Okay, now we're ready to set up uh, UDoc. So we need to create a store. So I'm gonna, um, just gonna create a really quick store.rs file here. I'm gonna mod that. You can put the store in the same file as your app, I like to keep it just a little bit separate just to make it a little bit easier to look at it and go like see what's going on. These files can eventually get a little bit bigger and I like having them just be their own thing. Uh, okay, so we have our mod store. All right, so first of all, we need to create a struct for this. So we're gonna have a pub struct. This is gonna be, I'm just gonna call this the udox uh, store. Um, and let's put in the count. Uh, it does need to be public because it needs to be updated by something that, it, well, it's not it. So count, and you're gonna be a U32. How many times the button has been clicked? Okay, um, now we're gonna have an init for this. Um, this init function is gonna take in nothing, but we're gonna return a dispatch, um, an instance of dispatch which uh, is going to basically allow us to mutate this UDEX store. So uh, dispatch. Now in dispatch, we're gonna be using a basic store that's provided to us by UDEX. Uh, I actually want to pull in all of this. I forgot to bring in the prelude, but uh, Rust Analyzer is helping me out. So we're gonna use a basic store. And inside of that is the UDEX store. So it's a little bit of a complicated type here. Um, okay, so now, now we're gonna actually do the thing. So dispatch, we give it a type. So basic store, uh, UDEX store, close you, new, and that's it. So this will, uh, let's see, clone. Okay, so now it's yelling at me, hey, this store isn't correct. You need clone. So let's go ahead and drive that. Um, all right, let's hit save and see what else it needs. It also needs default. So when it 
creates this, it's gonna use the default values for count. We could implement default ourselves and then set this to be whatever we want, um, or you can let the default values be whatever whatever these are. So uh, a count, a U32 default is gonna be zero. That's gonna be fine for me. Okay, so now we have U. Now it's just yelling us that init is not being used. Let's come back to the library and in create, we're gonna initialize the init and I wanna store that dispatch away. So we know that this is coming. Let's go ahead and store the dispatch um, inside of here. So dispatch is gonna be this dispatch, basic store, Udux store. Um, okay, so let dispatch is going to be equal to, uh, we're going to call that init function. And now in self, we can store away dispatch. All right, things should still be working for us. However, the button still isn't working for that. Okay, so what's next? Um, now that we have the dispatch here, we need to hook up the counter to use Udux so that it, well, it can be used. Um, we are going to use a, um, uh, the, the special component called with dispatch that goes as, as part of a tag here. So I'm gonna update, let's actually just create this new. I'm gonna do a with dispatch, and then we have to give it the type, which is gonna be this counter. And you're yelling at me that uh, with dispatch props is not satisfied. Okay, so we need to have with dispatch props available for these properties to use this. Okay, so let's update that. So this is gonna be uh, dispatch props, uh, and then the same thing as before, basic store, Udex store. Um, let's see, U component. Uh, now the U component needs to implement that too. So over here, we're gonna say our properties are uh, dispatch props, basic store, Udux store. That makes this error go away, and now our counter is uh, is here. Okay, great. Now let's um, let's update uh, let's update our format to use the value from the store. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the count here. So our count is going to be equal to, and now it's going to be available to us in context in the properties because we've told it that we now have. Uh, the store essentially available to us in here. So it's going to be ctx.props.state. And now this is the object that we have uh, here in the store. So now I can do dot count. That gives me a U32. I can now use this right here. Now, unfortunately, it's still showing a zero because that's what the default for a U32 is. Uh, let's to make sure that we're actually hooked up to the store correctly by implementing default ourselves on here, and then we can set it to be a completely different number. So we're gonna do impl default for udux store. Um, right now, count, let's set you to be like five, let's say. And now we see it auto updates to five. So we are reading from the store at this point in time. Okay, great. But now how are we gonna hook up the button? So uh, next thing, we're gonna create an on click handler for this. So let, uh, this is gonna be on click equals, um, we're gonna do a context.props. Um, if we do a dispatch, that actually gives us access to the dispatch. Um, we can now then basically 
do whatever you want to update the store. So in this case, we want to create a reducer. Now we have a couple choices here. If we just do reduce, I can create a closure in here that takes in state and allows me to change anything. So for example, I can uh, do a state.count plus equals to one. The problem is though, that this doesn't return anything. We don't have an on-click um, event handler here. So that's not really gonna be good for us. There's a couple other ones here. So instead of reduce, we can do reduce callback or reduce callback with. Uh, a reduce callback um, gives us the exact same thing here, except now it returns a callback, the type of callback that is used on a component like this. So now we can say, on click equals on click. And now it knows that it's an mouse event and it's gonna be, uh, it, this should work for us. And there's a, final, um, there's a final callback here, which is a reduce callback with. When we do this one, we can now take in a second, uh, uh, a property that's coming in. So for example, if we wanted to handle the event coming in here, we would then you know, have this be brought in. So this would be essentially, as we see, the mouse event itself is now available to us. So that's just in case it's something like a text event from a input field, we want to then uh, do the fun magic to grab the value and then, uh, and then store that into the store. In this case, we don't need that because it's just a click. I don't actually care about the event. Okay, so that should be incrementing by plus one every time we hit the button. Let's see if that works. Hey, it does. Okay, awesome. So now, every time we click the button, uh, we're incrementing this value and we're reading that from the store. That's great. Uh, let's create another component here to sort of read that counter so it's separate. So it's two different components all reading together. So we're gonna do maybe like, um, call this display that are s. And once again, this has to be a struct component. Okay, so we brought in u, we brought in u ducks. Let's uh, create the component itself. Um, I'm gonna call this display count inside of here because I don't want it to get confused with like a display trait. All right message is nothing we don't really care um the properties we do care so this is going to be that uh dispatch props with the basic store and uh udex store inside um for create it's going to be simple we're just going to return self and for the view here um we want to get the count out of the store so that count equals that ctx props state count. And now we can return this HTML. So let's do, uh, we'll do a div so we can do our label too. Okay, so this will be our display count. Uh, let's close at h1 tag, and then we'll do a, a p tag with, we're gonna use a, a format for this again. The button was pressed, or let's just do it se def separately. So we'll just do count that and count. Okay, 
So um, we've created this. We have to hook that up in here. So we have to do another with dispatch here. And we have to pull in that, uh, uh, that component. So use, uh, this is gonna be display, display count that we put in here. All right, we shouldn't have any errors. And now we can see, okay, display count, it's set to five. And now as we press this button, it increments in both ones together. Now, um, stopping here would be a mistake because there's one more level of complexity where this can sort of go wrong. And it can be, um, can be a little bit tough to sort of like figure out what's happening. So we're gonna add a router to the mix. Um, I have a router sort of in waiting here. Um, we have a counter route. Uh, it's just at, at slash, which is gonna be fine. I don't really care about a complex routing system right now. So I wanna pull in, um, I actually want to pull in use. Uh, oh, I need to tell, I need to mod the router. Okay, so now we want to bring in Udux Prelude. So we need to bring that in here. And let's say on uh, on slash, I also want to load the route the counter through the router. We're gonna want to return HTML, um, and then we need to do that. We need to do that entire with dispatch here. And then we're gonna bring in the counter. Um, okay, great. And then we're gonna come back to the library and we're now going to load up the, um, uh, the counter below these things. So we can see these are on the base route. They're not behind a router. Um, and then down here, we are gonna have a router. So this is, I think it was browser router, uh, which does mean we need to pull in uh, use you router prelude. So we have access to browser router. Uh, inside of that, we need to use the switch statement. Uh, we have that with uh, uRouter, but we also need to pull in the route information. So that's router, uh, we need route, and we need the switch. Okay, so we're gonna use the switch component here. Uh, this is going to be for type route. Um, then we're going to do switch. I think it was render. Render equals uh, switch render. And then we call the switch. We hand it the switch function. And then close that up. All right, no errors, which means I think I did that correctly. So now uh, this ta this um, is where all those components, well, all those components, the counter is really gonna be loaded in here because we're on slash. So if we go back to our app, we now see counter in here twice. So this counter and this display count, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. Uh, this counter and this display count is the one that is in the root of the project. And then counter is here because we're on slash. Now, when I click, click me, everything's working. Um, but notice that this number is not incrementing. The, uh, it is not reading from the state. However, it also seems to be reading from the state at default because it's set to five. But when I click this button, the other ones are working. So it's working, but not working. Let's take a look at what's going on here. If, if the button is working and it's behind the router, it's not because it's not hooked up to the store. It clearly is. The, uh, the problem here is that 
it's not re-rendering when the state changes. Sorry about that. My uh, kitty cat wants uh, wants to play. Um, so how are we going to get it to recognize that the state has changed so that way this updates? Well, we're going to come back into counter here. And we're going to make a little bit of a change. Um, we're going to store the dispatch in the struct. That way, when state changes, that dispatch changes just a little bit. But because that's in the, um, that's in the state of the component, that's going to, uh, to cause it to refresh, to re-render. Okay, so um, actually, wait, no, uh, that was that was one of the things. The other way to do it is to have an update here, and then we'll have that um, uh, we'll have to run the update and then return true on that. So let's do both these. So we're gonna store a dispatch, and you're gonna be a dispatch props because we're gonna grab these from the dispatch props here. Okay, so you're gonna have a basic store, UDEX store in here. Let's uh, throw, let's create these in here. So that dispatch equals, uh, doo -doo -doo. these are the context, props, dispatch, that's it. We can now re uh, return in here. Dispatch. Now, this is a reference, so we actually need to clone this, which should be fine because it's behind like an RC and ref cell. It's, it's basically making it so we can clone it, but we're still getting the same thing. So now we have our dispatch and the counter. Let's see if just doing this on its own solved the problem for us. So we're gonna come back to here. Hey, now everything updates as we want it to. Notice I'm not using the dispatch at all. I'm just storing it right here. So to make that very obvious, I'm gonna put an underscore in front of that. And now I have a UDUX store that's properly being, um, uh, that's properly working behind uh, a, 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 view, a U router. So that, uh, that's how we can set up and use UDUX inside of our applications to have a shared state. Uh, right now we're just having a simple struct with a count in it, but we can have a struct of structs. It can go all the way down. Um, basically as complex as you want Redux to be, it can be as complex here too. All right, thank you so much for, uh, for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.